evening. It's Jeff from RV Diagnostics. Um, we pulled this 5.5K Onan generator out, Marcus Gold. All right, Marquis Gold. And here's the data plate on it. It's a Spec C. So when I ask you what your spec is, it usually says Spec C, but the 5.5 HG Jab, Pig Jab, 1038 Charlie, that Charlie is the same as the Spec C. All right, so we had to pull this out of that uh, fleet wheel we were working on, okay? That I did the computer, engine computer on knock sensor code, and oh yeah, HWH leveling system, 625 series without air, dump air, just straight up on an F53 chassis. All right, so now we're we're gonna, when we put the generator back in, we're gonna show you how we did it. It's the opposite of taking it out. So what you have is, this is an aluminum frame, or pop, pop mud aluminum frame. Um, the bolts that hold it up end up breaking off. So I made these little buckets out of a AC putty that you put around the tubes. I did that on the heater core and evaporator. So that, that lets me put the PV blaster in and let it soak and soak and soak, right? And that way it'll eventually come off, all right? And we're gonna have to drill them out. So uh, two of them broke, or three, and I got one loose on the other side. It's a 9 16 bolt but it's a steel bolt in an aluminum frame, so that's what happens to them. You got to really soak them good. We were just in a big hurry to pull this damn thing out. Now, this is the cover. What we found was that we were taking the exhaust pipe off to get it out, all right, because that sticks out of the RV, all right. It's not this one, that's my beaver. His was in the back, back air, sticking out the rear of the exhaust, but um, the whole muffler was shaking loose in there so we had a we're going we got it out we put it on this little stand i used this before and we had to get a torx to loosen these up and that is a t30 all right so i'll put you on pause there's two on this side two on the other side all right so we got the cover off there you go now I'm going to help you learn something so you learn about generators. Not just that it's an ONAM 5.5 spec C, that if the shaft of the motor goes vertical and the shaft of the alternator, the rotor and stator is vertical, then something connects them horizontally. Well, this is a belt driven one, okay? So we got to get this off, this bottom plate and get to that. So, these are the slip rings in there. Hold on, put it on pause. All right, so, we're gonna look at something here. A lot of you just see this part, right, the air filter, the carburetor. Now, let me show you something. This is what the carb air filter box bolts onto, the back of this carburetor. Then the bolts go through to this manifold. Now look at it. This manifold bolts to here, and it has this top plate. So all this is places for vacuum leaks that come with age. Kind of like us, you know? Age has us do things. So you've got a gasket here, and you got that top plate there. It goes all the way across. So the carburetor comes in, the manifold goes to the left bank, right bank. All right, so there's your spark plug. All right, here's your starter motor. Okay, depends how many hours on this we're going to find out. Okay, and then back, this is the back of the engine, right? Crankshaft is right there, goes through, it's vertical. And then that's the rotor, this is the stator, rotor's inside. Put you on pause. I'm going to blow this up. We're going to go look inside at these slip rings. Okay, hold on. You see the white ring right below it is a slip ring it's all scarred up and then you go to the top of it above the white and that's a slip ring that's these two wires right here and the brush set will come out all right so I'm gonna take the brush set out 
and we'll, we're gonna look at it later all right but that's not really what it's here for hold on so this first part of this video is one is a familiarization with this generator 5.5k a lot of them are familiar or close resemblance of how this one's put together so don't let it scare you so we went over the intake manifold where a lot of leaks can happen okay we went over how to get the cover off and there were, I don't think there were t30 torque screws there was four of them we went over that there was nine sixteenths bolts that are steel that hold it up into the RV and steel into aluminum base causes um, corrosion all right and they break off so you have to really soak them good and I showed you how I made little at a putty or whatever you want I use my uh, AC putty and I make little buckets around it and I keep hitting it with PB blaster right and it soaks and soaks and soaks so when I either take the bolt out it comes out easier and you just don't um, you just don't yank the bolt out you go you go left about an eighth right left about an eighth right and then you do that when it comes looser and looser you let it cool off because it's getting hot and when it gets real hot it snaps so you go to the next one back and forward back and forward three or four times don't let it get hot and then go to the other one go back and forward back and forward eventually you'll get them all out without breaking them well this one that didn't happen that way we were in a big damn hurry all right so that's it now remember when he took the exhaust off i have help this is the guy that's at the rv diagnostic school and repair shop so he was helping me and that really lowered the cost of getting this done so when we were taking this off from the bottom right this one it was sticking out that way okay i said man that muffler looks like it's broken and it sounded like it so looks, looks pretty good that's a flex pipe so maybe i was wrong this time yeah that flex is really good that's incredible so we're going to check this flex because sometimes they leak all right so i'll do a smoke test on that and where it hooks up below so this has got to come off so we're going to take this whole system we're going to drain it with oil and all and then we're going to flip it and we're going to get to the bottom cover right here this one uh, that's where all the the pulleys the couplers when you go this far there's a rubber isolator like a harmonic balancer on an engine it has a steel ring got a rubber and another steel ring around it it's called a coupler and it softens the blow and the uh two cylinders of the engine fire and impact and all that but you need to change that with the belt folks all right don't don't get cheap you're this damn far like i said well look how many hours this thing has and then we're going to decide whether he puts a new starter on at least rebuild it we'll take it apart clean the brushes or clean the slip rings up the commentators we'll put new brushes in it and then we'll lube the little gear that slides out all right and we'll go from there well thank you this is jeff from rv don Ossix. this is going to be a many many videos i'm gonna to try to keep it down to about 10 10 minutes i might go 12. okay so we're going to talk about just about every component what it does how it affects remember i told you about the uh, carburetor where it's bolted up to and then the manifold all the leaks it can cause that can cause drivability or drivability problems that can cause running problems it cause them to go lean they get hot they shut off they don't idle right so not only does this video I'm going to teach you how to put change the belt and the coupler, but I'm going to go over the components, like the slip rings and all. All right, a lot of you still don't clean your slip rings out. They sit there. You won't, for the sake of us RVers, you won't go out and start your generator up for, you know, uh, 20 minutes, let it run, warm up, right? Then put a load on it like the AC, something equivalent that, you know, that many amps. Let that run 20, 30 minutes. Then shut the load off, whatever the load is. Then let the generator run again for another 20 minutes. Then shut it off. You have to exercise it once a month like that. If you don't do that, them slip rings get nasty. And the more uh, junk gets on the slip rings when it turns, the 
it's like a set of rotors that rust. The pads actually get eaten quicker because you refuse to do your uh, preventive maintenance, during maintenance, and after maintenance checks. And that's keeping the generator running once a month. All right, so here we go. I'm not browbeating you, but I'm trying to save you thousands of dollars. All right, so I said I couldn't afford that thing unless not just that I know how to fix it, but I'm very anal on my preventive maintenance. So thank you very much, Jeff from RV Diagnostics. What's the motto? You're right, test not guess. What's the other same famous saying I have? I always say, safe travels. May your campfires burn bright till we meet again. Where are we gonna meet? We might in RV Diagnostics and troubleshooting garage and school. We might meet on the road. I'll wave, honk, honk, I'll, you know, all that stuff. And, and then we might meet at a campground. If you see me, I most likely ain't gonna fix your RV. Oh, we can talk about it. Depends how I feel, how hot it is. You gotta remember, if I'm at a campground, I'm usually camping. I'm on vacation. But a couple of people, you know, I'll go over, help them figure it out. They take us out to dinner. What a deal. All right, but I get to know you. That's the neat part. I'm 63 on uh i think this is august uh 24th 25th something like that 2022 so what's the other way you can join the facebook page rv diagnostics and troubleshooting and it's uh getting ready to be 29,000 members and that's a little over four years what's another way you can get a hold of me one-on-one -on -one, you can get my telephone number too um is join the website Right now, it's $112 a year. You know, the sugar gets a piece of that. PayPal gets a piece of that. Everybody gets a piece of that. Except I get a little piece of it, but that's okay. And that's where we do one-on-one -on -one with you. Through this phone, and I'm watching you do what you do. I don't care if it's drivability, diesel, gas, multimeter, AC, DC, brakes, air air brakes, air brake chambers, uh, anything. So, folks, I've been doing this stuff 50-some years. All right, just real quick to show you something. That's my baby, all right? That's just some of my certifications. I even got advanced level one and two. Oh, I got that like 10 years ago, 25 uh, years of certification. And that's in 2020, that was my grandkids. I still got them up there. All right, so here we go. Thank you very much for listening to me. Please subscribe and give me likes and comments. See you on my Facebook page.